Hello there, and welcome to another chess video. This time around we are going to look at the game that was played today in the so-called Icelandic Cup. The Icelandic Cup is a tournament which is designed to figure out who will play for Iceland in the World Cup. One of the most prestigious tournaments around. Now it's, it's a knockout tournament, we are in the semi-finals, and the players White pieces Helgi Gretarsson and the black pieces Hannes Stefansson. Now, very strong players. They are both grandmasters and what's more, they are both former world junior champions. So we're not dealing with any amateurs here. Now, the match is two games and this was the first game. The second game will be played tomorrow. So Helgi had white and he played d4. We have knight f6, c4, e6, and after knight f3, black has to pick the opening, and he picks the queen's Indian defense with b6. Other options are d5 to try to go for uh, queen's gambit declined or a tarash. You can play bishop b4, the bogo Indian, but he wants, uh, goes for b6, the so called queen's Indian, like I said. Uh, white has many options. He goes with a3, the Petrosian variation. Named after the ninth world champion, also used with great effect by Garry Kasparov, the 13th world champion. I also like this line myself. Bishop to b7, uh, knight c3, black knight breaks in the center. He has to break in the center at some stage, either with c5 or d5. In this case, it goes with d5. White takes it, black takes with a knight, queen c2. And black takes on c3. We have knight d7, e4, and c5. Now white decides to play bishop f4 here. We have c takes d4 and c takes d4. So after rook c8, we have we have a position that more likely would have a, uh, <coughs> arisen through something called the uh, uh, semi-tarash. And I'll go back now quickly to show you how that position would arise. After something like this, knight c3, d5 we would take, knight takes. Uh, I've analyzed some games on, on my channel, I think, where we had had this had this line. White plays like this, black takes, plays bishop b4, jack. We have this trade-off, black castles, we bring the bishop out. And he could play something like b6, bishop b7, rookie one to protect the pawn, and knight d7. And you'll notice that if we go back to the game after rook c8, you notice that not much will change. Black, you know, has, has the same pieces here, 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 and here. But the thing is, white is a little bit behind in developing his king, the bishop and the king, compared to the other one. And also we have the bishops on the board. And this can make a difference. In the, in the other line, the bishop played here and traded it off. But here it, it, it could be in the way or, or could be a good piece. It, it depends. But okay, first off, white needs to do something about this. He plays queen to b3, and he leaves the pawn on e4. And black thought for a while here and didn't take it. He played h6. If he were to take the pawn, white would get a very strong initiative. He'll play bishop a6 with tempo, hit the rook. The rook has to go somewhere. And you have to be really careful with black. Because, well, where can the rook go? Can't really go here because bishop b5, and then knight e5. You, you, excuse me, knight e5, utilizing the pin. Um, and if you go to a8, I mean, this is still an option, also taking the open file. White will get a lot of play. And he was playing really fast, so black didn't want to do that. So he, he tried something different, he played h6. Now white got on with development, decided to protect the pawn now, bishop to d3, and g5. And we've had some games with, with bishop e3 here. Uh, but bishop g3, very few games, so now we're entering new territory and bishop g3 is cheeky because well black seems to want to play here right and castle but white does not allow him to castle he now plays bishop d6 so this is why it might be better to have the bishop on, on g3 instead of e3 bishop d6 okay black said well I, I don't like the bishop i will attack it rook c6 and white decided to protect the bishop 
but he also created a very large threat, which black overlooked. Black played the g4. And now, it's your time to shine. Can you find the move that wins the game on the spot for white? You can do better than two world champions. One former world champion blundered it, and the other one missed it. Can you find the move that wins for white? It's truly amazing that they missed this because it's a well-known mating pattern called Bowden's mate. White could have taken the queen, swung it over here, grabbed the pawn. You can't do anything if you play queen e7 and take it with my queen, protected by the bishop. If you take with a pawn, bishop g6, look at this, Czech Slovakia, checkmate. Thank you very much, Czech you later. Checkmate. Unbelievable. He missed mate in two. I've never seen anything like this at this level. He played knight d2. Can you believe it? I, I, I can hardly believe it still. And after he played knight d2, you could see visibly that he noticed that he had missed it. So it's very, very difficult to, to, to get yourself in the frame of mind to continue the game when you know you missed something this big. But you have to. He played knight d2. But now black saw it. Well, one would think, but actually he didn't see it. Uh, I found out later that he got a phone call after the game and he hadn't seen it. He played rook takes d6, which prevents the mate. But he played it for positional reasons. Now he has a monster bishop on d4. Also he has this one. Again, cutting the board. So that's the theme of the game, the bishop's cutting the board. But only one of them saw it. White moved the rook, rook c1, but now the black pieces come alive tremendously. Knight to c5. Very good square for the knight. A protected square, and now we're threatening to take the pawn. White gave a check, king f8, and now queen g3. Protecting the pawn. This is almost white's only trump left in the game, the pawn on uh, d6. Black's pieces are tremendous. He has one pawn for the exchange, so technically he's down material, but his pieces are so active and well placed. And white still has problems with castling and stuff like that, like queen g5. You can't castle because of this. So this is actually a much better position for black. And white is really struggling to find moves. He went h4 here, point back to f6. And now white tried uh, d7. King e7. And now white should probably castle here. Castles, okay, black is much better. But the game goes on. I mean, white can fight. You know, if, if black makes a mistake, he might get back into the game. But instead, it looks like he missed something. He, he took on c5, and this just doesn't work. And it's probably a good example of a blind spot, because right now, the back rank, it's quite safe. We have a rook here on c1. Also, this diagonal, it's closed. There's a bishop on d4. But after you take on c5, bishop takes c5, now the back rank is weak. And this diagonal is open, so queen a1 is hanging in the air. So he might have missed queen a1. So he played queen c7. He's threatening to queen with jack and win the game. It's also possible he missed that he could play... That if he played this and black takes, after this, this would normally be good. But now when the king moves, it opens up the defense for the queen for the rook. So now he can't take this. Maybe he missed this. But after queen c7, rook d8, there's simply nothing to do. I mean, if you, okay, he saw this, but like if he castles, bishop d5, protect the bishop, bishops are protected, this is hanging. If you move the queen, I play g3, there's just everything, you know, white can't do anything. He's just completely, completely losing. So actually, I don't think it matters what he does here. He took on, on b7, but now there's queen a1. And there's simply no play for, for white here. Um, the game actually went on for a bit here, but we're not going to really talk much about it. I mean, black is up the exchange. And, uh, well, actually not a pawn, but, you know, well, actually now he takes a pawn, so it's up a pawn as well. Uh, queen a4, f5, just, you know, securing. 
Securing the pawns here, taking away the square for the knight on e4. And now queen d4. And white has to go for the queen trade because this is incoming. Then we take this, trade everything. Queen b4, but black simply took. And then took on d7. A nice transformation, and now he's simply up two pawns. The pawns will roll. He can pick up this pawn if he wants. Bishop is better than the knight. Completely winning. And we don't have to talk much about these moves. And the after king c6 black uh, got the win because white actually resigned. So a nice win for for Hannes Stefansson, but shocking stuff. Uh, I mean, black allowing the maiden to and white missing it. And it's rare to see this at grandmaster level, but we saw it today. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe it gave you some inspiration that, well, if you blunder, look at this. The best in the world are doing it as well. So don't feel too bad. You know, chess is a learning curve. It's a journey, not a destination. See you in the journey. Bye-bye.